if you look closely to your right, you will see a man who died from frostbite. Welcome to the Funny Business Podcast, everybody. Uh, hope you're having a great Friday. We are recording on Monday, and I can't feel my feet because uh, it's freezing outside. It is awful. Um, I hate winter. Um, I hate Pennsylvania. I hate the snow. I hate the cold. Uh, and I hate myself because for some reason I sat at my desk today and I did not put on my space heater once. So th- did I do it to myself? We don't have to go down that road. Mike, uh, as someone who also equally hates snow as much as I do, I hope you're in a better mood than I am. Ah, d- dude, I, I, I would ask you to start all over again because that negative energy, that's not available here. That's, that's not allowed here. It's Monday. You know what? That's right. It's it's not allowed here. Uh-huh. I, listen, you're going against community guidelines. We have to give you a strike. I have to file a report to HR <laughs> because we want none of that. Positive vibes only. Positive, positive, vibes only. positive peas. I think that that's that's how the that's how the trend is working now. Um, or or positive is it just, what? Or is it peas? Is it just the P? Like there's there's a emoji that's blue with the letter P. Um, I think Big Cat tweeted it um, a couple nights ago, um, and it's a oh. meme that's going around. That's basically its song. I'll send you the link later on today, but it's positive vibes only. The only negatives we're getting is COVID tests because COVID is just shitty right now, and it's just, you know, we hope everybody's doing okay and staying safe. But, uh, you know, snow, snow is just, it's great. Um, you know, it's just something lovely that you get to do extra in the morning when you're trying to clean off your car or defrost your windows. Uh, it's 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 a little it's a little damper on the day, but once that's all figured out, you're smooth sailing forward. Uh, Matt, I cannot apologize to your stupidity of not turning on your your space heater. So um, Neither I can apologize. I. <laughs> I apologize for that, but uh, no, Matt. It's uh, we're we're vibing. We're vibing mm-hmm. this week. It's it's great. Uh, I learned so many good things, and I've experienced so many good things this this uh, past weekend that that I was happy to share. Um, my first one, Matt. Oh, we'll get a little warm. How about that? So I love it. Coffee, coffee's oh, great. The coffee's best. amazing. Um, I had two great coffee experiences in the last uh, 72 hours before us recording the podcast. Uh, the first one, Jenna and I visit a local coffee shop that is in her area. Um, Matt, you know me. I'm, I'm not much of the hot type of coffee guy. Um, yep. I've recently to, become a hot coffee guy. I think, I think we're getting to that age, Matt, where, uh-huh. where it's starting to become a little bit more applicable for us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were there. It's obviously uh, they had their own flavor swirls. Um, Matt, I got a, a coffee with cinnamon bun flavoring. Um, oh. Matt, that was one of the best hot coffees I think I've ever had, ever. Um, and I had an amazing bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich with, uh, mm. wait, hot ranch? No, my gosh. What? Uh, Hollandaise? No. Oh, my gosh. I forgot what it is. Jalapeno. No, not jalapeno ranch. Jen is going to be like, Mike, you literally got it. Um, like hot sauce ranch. That's what I'm going to oh, call it. Okay. I'll figure it out later. That was, that was tasty. Um, but Matt, you know me. Um, I've saved a lot of money, uh, as Jenna has pointed out, uh, that I don't go to Duncan that much anymore. I only go about once a week, uh, depending on if I'm really struggling. Uh, my cold brew. Um, so I do cold brew uh, Monday through yep. Thursday through the work week. I love a good uh, cold brew. Honestly, I'll go to Dunkin' sometimes. I'll get the cold brew instead of the iced coffee. So I, I've I've made a discovery, Matt. Um, so you would think that, okay, well, it's cold brew. It's going to go in the fridge. What I'm going to decide to do is just do my thing. I'm going to put the coffee in its uh, little cylinder and then pour water over it. Doesn't matter the temperature of it. I've yeah. learned that having pouring hot water over that coffee and storing it in the fridge actually activates more of the coffee when you put it in your cold brew. I know, right? Uh, So I think it's called hot blooming cold brew. Uh, So I literally took hot water and I was pouring it, preparing it. uh, And then I woke up this morning, got got all situated, and I ended up um, tasting much more flavor of the coffee um, than I ever have because wow. you would think fridge wise, like you don't want hot, like it makes no sense to put hot water in the fridge. But during that time being for it, 
to to activate those those tastes and and those oxidives i think that's the correct uh word terminology yep. there for the coffee uh you wouldn't think that and, and i experienced it today and it was delicious that's awesome I, honestly there's nothing better than a great cup of coffee to start your day there's just nothing better I, did i mention i again this is just me forgetting what i say in the podcast did i mention i got a keurig for my office Yes, you did. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've been averaging like two cups a day and then a hot apple cider in the afternoon. That's, that's a good combo. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm addicted. Um, we got this. I've also, I know I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it again for everybody out there. <laughs> Banana nut bread uh, cake cups. Mm. Phenomenal. Going to put a little vanilla cannoli creamer in there. It's top notch. You, you might as well just talk about your margarita maker no, for the Holy no. Trinity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I know I've mentioned that one too many times in this podcast. Um, but yeah, and then we actually got to experience um, a, a family invited over for us for dinner uh, the one night, part of a, the church that we've been going to. Um, and it was really nice. We, we had uh, ham. And it was, it was good ham, mm. man. Um, not a big ham guy. Really? Why? Honest. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, I would prefer chicken. I prefer steak. Hot take. I prefer turkey over ham. Okay, no, I do too. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, I could do like a ham slice, but like if it's just like regular like ham that you cook, eh, I don't know. It's not my thing. And then we had, uh, Jenna made uh, blondies, which obviously mm. were, were fabulous. And then we played this, have you ever played Ravine before? I've never heard of it. Yeah, so it's like this survival game. Uh, it's a game of chance. That's why I've been explaining it to everybody. Uh, it's basically you draw cards and whatever it affects your health and you have to forge for food. And it's interesting. It's pretty interesting. So It sounds fun. Let's say you start a podcast or you're running your own side hustle and have a bunch of links that you want your audience to know about. As a podcast, Matt and I have all of our social media, all of our podcast links and other important things. Make it easier for your followers to find your important links, social media, and latest content by having it all in one page with solo.to. I'll be honest, I have used similar websites like this, but nothing compares to solo.to. All of your links are clean and easy to navigate. Have an upcoming video? It's really easy to make those changes. Plus, solo.to has opportunities to upgrade to include more customization, advanced analytics, and so much more. Solo.to is giving us a special opportunity for you to get 10% off if you create an account and upgrade. Be sure to go to solo.to slash funny business to create your account today. Um, Matt, I, I actually forgot. Um, I have a proposal that I'd like to bring to the podcast uh, for our next in-person podcast. Uh, I'm in. Um, so Matt, I, I, got, I got a nice gift for Christmas. Uh-huh. Uh, that I'd be really interested in us uh, trying. Um, so Matt, just take five guesses while while I go get the item. Um, as far as what do you think? Uh, I'll give you three guesses, but make sure they're in depth because it's just right around the kitchen. Um, three guesses in which you think I'd want to bring to the podcast. Go ahead. As an in person podcast, um, my first one is what? What do you mean? I don't know why we would play that on a podcast, but that was the first thing that came up. Uh, maybe like a card game on like how well you know each other. Uh, I recently got one of those past couple weeks and, uh, sex dice. You know, I'm I have just gonna, three great guesses. I'm just, I'm just going to wait until after the edit because that'll make please it do. more interesting. So yep. Yep, please do. Yep. <laughs> uh, so Matt, do you remember us trying a ghost pepper donut from Dunkin' oh, Donuts a while back? That was a good donut. It was good. Was it spicy? Did you get the hot chip? I did not. Uh, um, I, so, I keep wanting to do that too. So for Christmas, um, shout out to Lindsay and Eli. Uh, Lindsay is Jenna's cousin of the family. Got it. Uh, I was like, I don't know who those people are. <laughs> uh, Ava and Harper. Uh, what a sweet family. Uh, so they got me a little little gift basket. Um, and Matt, it's sauces. Oh, what kind of sauces we got? So this is <laughs> so we got. So this get is sauced up on a okay. Monday oh, afternoon. Saucy man, when I'm not trying it now, you're coming with me. We're uh, getting lost in the sauce. This is Marie Sharp's Beware Comatose Heat Level Habanero Pepper Sauce. Oh God! Uh, it is made with select red habanero pepper, vinegar, carrots, salt, onions, lime juice, garlic. 
capsicum, and spices. Um, keep out of reach of children. Avoid contact oh. with eyes or skin. Got water. Do not play tricks on the weak or elderly with the sauce. Um, for concierge of extreme heat and quality sauces only. All others beware. Great for cooking, flavor soup, saucers, and stir fries, or add boiled water for rice, pasta, or boiled seafood. So that's beware. Um, Matt, the next one. <laughs> okay. Is it a little, little, little cool, colder? Uh, no. <laughs> um, it's, it's a habanero hot sauce from hell, Devil's Revenge. The world's, quote, the world's hottest sauce beyond hell, mm. made with one million Scoville caps, capsium extract. Uh, extremely hot, use sparingly, avoid contact with eyes and other sensitive areas. Uh, it is made with. Water, habanero pepper, vinegar, capsium extract, xanthan gum, carrots, salt, garlic spices. Refrigerate after opening. Caution: extremely hot. And Matt, I, sir- I would, I would assume it's hot. Yeah. And Matt, last but certainly not least, it's the hottest <laughs> sauce. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I wonder what that one's like. Uh, habanero pepper mash, water, habanero pepper, ghost pepper mash, carrot, white vinegar, white onion. Uh, lime juice, canola, vegetable, capsium, oralisin, salt, garlic, citric acid, and xanthan gum. Uh, we warned you this is a serious effing hot sauce. That's right. We said it because we had to. There's no other way to describe it, just how hot this sauce is. I suppose we could have said it's like the fiery depths of hell or that's mm-hmm. it's, that it's ass burning <laughs> and even keep away from pets and small children and avoid contact with sensitive areas. But it is hot as F. Uh, wordy. The sauce is... Uh, yeah, what did see here? The to the point, no beating around the bush. Honesty is always the best policy, uh, isn't it? If this sauce burns intensely, don't be afraid to let it out. Scream F at the top of your lungs, you'll feel better. There is no better verbal therapy. <laughs> no, I don't know when you plan on doing this, but I have uh, I'm fine with it. I have a colonoscopy on Monday that I need to prep for. <laughs> uh, so I, if you just want to do this Sunday, I can cancel the rest of the stuff I have to do. <laughs> Because that sounds like it's going to be painful. Um, I'm not ready for this. Um, and neither am I. That's, so, yeah. A little fun for, for the podcast. What, what are we going to eat those with? Chips. We're, we're just going to go straight with, okay. with Tostitos. Tostitos, I like it. Yeah. yeah. I, Mama, re- Mama didn't raise no bitch. So. Do we get the rinse with ranch in between? Uh, well, I think we're just going to jump to this one. I, we're just doing one. Go yeah, ahead. we're just gonna do Excellent. one. Excellent. Good. No, Good. there's no Excellent. way. I just I wanted to showcase the other ones, and then there was one that I tried. I forget the name of it. Um, it was just habanero hot sauce, and I was like, okay, this sounds like the the least of of them all. And I took a lick. I was coughing because oh, of how no. hot it was. Oh no! So if that was oh. hot, this one, oh man, oh, I can't wait. I can feel the acid reflux already, I, but I'm excited. <laughs> I'm in. We'll I'm so ready for you the next time you come over, Matt. Um, but Matt, I also love this because present us is like, oh, this is gonna suck. But we're like, ah, oh, that's future us problem. Like yeah. he'll figure it out. <laughs> that's not my problem. That's my problem. Five weeks away or whenever we see each other next. <laughs> I hope soon. Um, but Matt, let's talk more about being a little saucy. Uh, Matt, we ended up seeing something unique on Twitter, uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, you know, Matt, I, I, it's it's weird how this resonates with us, not in the sense, the action this has been done, but just the scenario. Um, so Matt, there is a a West coast baseball league. Uh, it's a summer baseball team in the West coast league, uh, called the Portland pickles. I don't know if we've ever recognized that there was a team such as the Portland pickles. No, it's because I believe they're an independent league. I don't yes. think they're actually affiliated with the team, uh, but it's a great name for my for a baseball team. So, of course, any small shop baseball team or just sports team in general, you know that the power of social media is very vital to your success mm-hmm. and to getting people in the stands, getting season tickets, getting the merch, getting all these things involved. Uh, so, Matt, as it is, uh, the Portland Pickles, their mascot mm-hmm. is a pickle. Uh, so Makes sense. the name's Dylan. Uh, very creative there. 
<laughs> Dylan the Pickle. Uh, oh, I get it. I didn't get yeah. it at first. I get it now. Yeah. Dill Pickle. Uh, Got it. So the team's mascot uh, decided to do a social media takeover on Twitter. Playful, fun. What's there anything to do with mascots? Nothing wrong. Uh, so he decided to take a photo and he tweeted, new phone, who dis, uh, with a suggestive photo that showed the mascot sitting down and appearing to expose his green genitalia, or should I say mm-hmm. his green pickle. Uh, the team addressed the photo when some Twitter users found the post to be tasteless. Uh, the quote, the Portland Pickles tweeted, we have ended our mascot takeover. It's come to our attention that this photo can be misinterpreted as a disturbing image. Uh, the team added, Dylan would like to go on the record and say that he was trying to give his fans a thumbs up. Uh, Matt, thoughts? Genius. <laughs> genius absolutely yeah it really is so they also had a tweet under their original tweet was it to and you can correct me if i'm wrong wasn't it to raise awareness to what you actually post on social media maybe so i saw they had a tweet under that it was like this post was made to show awareness that you should always double check before you post something on social media which if oh yes yep always double check before posting Mm mm-hmm whether that was, you know, the whole purpose of this tweet, or if they just came up with on the fly, who knows? If they just came up with on the fly, even more genius. Um, I love mascots. Mascots can be so fun, and you can do so many things with them, uh, especially in minor league baseball or independent league. Mascots are huge because they are a huge part of your brand. And while you do have to be careful what you do with mascots, it's always good to push the edge a little bit with a mascot because, hey, the end of the day it's mascot it's fun you know people can't get that mad at a mascot unless they do something terrible yeah it's very rare that you'll see mascot uh accused and and you know it's it's the brand and you know it's it's always safe to to work with mascots because no matter who is underneath the costume uh you will always have that scenario and then if something does happen the person who's under the costume is usually responsible for it Mm -hmm. um so Matt, I don't know if you realized, but they were trying, he was trying to pull it off and saying, oh, they were trying to give him a thumbs up. Uh, Matt, uh, Dylan uh, decided to tag um, a bunch of people in his mm. photo. I did see uh, this. Uh, off the top of my head, he tagged Manscaped. Yep. Um, there them. were some weird ones that made no sense. Yeah, stick them. Yeah, there were some weird ones. Uh, Skittles. Yep. Bush's Beans. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just a couple others. For, There's like two random people. Senator Scott Weiner, who's a California state senator. That was a great um, one. Oscar Meyer, Corn mm-hmm. Nuts, um, Justin Dick Meyer, who is uh, somebody. I think there was just two random people. <laughs> I think he just tagged two random ass people. And then apparently Eric Stengel, who is oh a Portland Pickles first baseman. Ah, there we go. <laughs> that makes sense. So uh, I can't believe that he was given a thumbs up when those people in particular were being tagged in this photo. Maybe it's like an inside joke or like uh, they know them personally type of thing. I hope so. Um, I think it's still funny. I, oh. again, again, it's hysterical. I love mascots as because I am have been a mascot. In Same. The past. Right, I think most of us like mascots. Like, there's people out there that are creeped out by mascots, um, which you know I understand. But think of the funniest mascots in sports. You got the Philly fanatic. Oh. He's known for doing crazy stuff. Gritty does whatever the hell he wants, and he's the best mascot in hockey. Um, the Suns gorilla is just awesome. He's known as one of the best. Ma- Benny the Bull, Benny. huge on TikTok. Yep. Um, you know. Mascots are great because they have their own brand, but they make the brand of the team even bigger. You're right. And that also kind of complements those who may not be interested in the game of baseball, but are not required to go, but just go because it's a family atten- uh, attendance. Uh, so you may have kids who don't necessarily like playing baseball, but then at the same time, they like the mascot like they enjoy like the character and the stuff that they do between innings Mm -hmm. uh which is really exciting sometimes uh matt i you know we we both agreed that we were mascots at one point in our careers uh i've i've had so much fun being a mascot and it would just be hilarious to do a social media takeover and just to have that opportunity um 
But I blame the social media team of the Portland Pickles uh, because they did it wrong. They should have had the person, they should have had Dylan take photos and then send it to the social media team. And then the social media team should have posted it as a form of process. Uh, They just handed him the account and said, here you go. Uh, And that, my friends, is how the pickle grew. (laughs) Yeah, I still kind of wonder if it was all set up. I don't know. Wouldn't be so surprised. Could you just imagine to get, just to just to go like crazy out there? Like I would never say like, "Hey, let's post the mascot's dick on the internet." <laughs> That's not what I would do. Um, but I'm not. Not everybody thinks like us. I don't know. Maybe they just want to say like, "Hey, let's get our name out there. Let's let's try and go viral." So at this point, I mean, the tweet is still up, Matt. So it's not that it was so embarrassing that they that they've taken it down. Uh, How many likes does it have? Like over hundred thousand. 69,000. <laughs> nice. nice. That's, a good, that's probably why it's still up. <laughs> oh, man. You can't make that up. Uh, it's got about f- 5,950 quoted retweets and about almost 10K retweets. That's insane. Uh, and they've um, also made shirts, um, which is what? apparently uh, it is going to Dylan's defense fund. <laughs> um and it literally is the tweet it says new phone who dis and it's literally him with a thumbs up like it's an actual full hand of a thumbs up but it's particularly lower in the t-shirt almost around the belly button that's hysterical God, <gasps> this is just genius <laughs> i mean but that's the great thing about you know mascots and minor league baseball and stuff like that like i have a t-shirt from the wisconsin timber rattlers because yep. they changed their name once to the wisconsin other turkers Am I ever going to a game? No. Do I ever? Do I follow them on social media? No. Did I see a great promotion that they had or a great idea and buy a T-shirt because it's cool? Absolutely. Because that that's that's the beauty of minor league baseball and and independent league baseball teams. Yeah. So the the Portland Pickles said that quote. Dylan is in timeout. Uh, who, which is the the response to the Lexington Legends who called the situation quote a tough look for mascots everywhere. Um. If the mascot, if the mascot is out of a job, which I highly doubt they're out of a job, uh, male grooming company Manscaped tweeted, we're hiring Dylan. Uh, oh. And then the official Twitter account for Snickers tweeted a photo of its signature candy bar wrapped inside a pickle writing, maybe you need a snickle. <laughs> mm, interesting. Uh, the pickles replied, this is making a bad situation worse, uh, to which Manscaped wrote, pretty nuts, to be honest. <laughs> That's... That's genius. Also, as someone who's just recently entered the Manscaped uh, clientele, um, I can condone. There's uh, he could pickle could use Manscaped. Affirm. You sure. said condone. Yeah, condone is I'm against it. Affirm. Correct. Is- Affirm. Yep. <laughs> Not worth it today. That's okay. Uh, yeah, but yeah, pickle could maybe he needs it. Do you think Matt people are tired of hearing our anchor ad? Yeah, probably. But let's be honest, if it wasn't for Anchor, we would not be doing a podcast. You're right, Matt. Once again, we have to thank Anchor for helping us continue to make each episode. Y'all know how it works. Anchor is free. It's easy to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer and distributes your podcast to platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And you all know that you can make money too, even with the first couple episodes that you start with. So why haven't you started your own podcast yet? Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. So Mike, when do you think we'll stop talking about Anchor? Oh man, Matt. I, you know what? To be completely honest, I think we'll be talking about this for a long time. Matt, did you, I, and, and part of my reason for bringing this topic up for today uh do you have any fun experiences of of you being a mascot obviously nothing as crazy as this yeah um uh, i've done it so many times you could keep the coolest like, thing you the coolest thing i think i ever up. did yeah the coolest thing i ever did was i made donuts just as a mascot how uh so the mascot that i had it was very furry Yes. Um, so what we did was we put plastic bags over his hands, over my hands. And then the donuts were made. I was just kind of like rolling them in powdered sugar. 
Okay. Oh, okay. You got the easy job. Like you I did get the easy <laughs> job. So it, it, we were making Foshnox for Foshnox mm. today. Uh, so we were making them in powdered sugar. Yeah. Uh, and it, I don't remember if I actually helped, like, actually make some of the donuts. I don't remember all <laughs> yeah. of it. But I do remember taking the donuts and just dipping them in powdered sugar and just doing all kinds of stuff. It was uh, that was really cool because most times you don't think, you know, a mascot with a lot of fur can do stuff like that. But we made a way around it. Well, especially um, the hands too. Like some mm-hmm. hands are only meant with four fingers, and then some with three, and it's it's upsetting because you are trying to actually use your hands and i feel so bad for anybody who's a mascot um shout out to all my underground uh mascot friends out there um if your mascot only has like four fingers uh or even three um you are just having the time of your life trying to be like spock (laughs) trying to do everything it's three and a thumb uh so i usually have my middle and ring finger in the same slot yeah i used to it's actually I mean, not as uncomfortable as you would think i used to spock it like i i had i had two two fingers and the thumb uh mm-hmm. so a paw uh but yeah i i learned so much when i was the mascot because i i met so many people that were professional mascots mm-hmm. um and i got to learn so many things and i remember the one day uh during an event we were celebrating the birthday of my mascot um, and we invited our local uh, minor league team's mascot to, quote, party with me at a basketball game. Um, and like I've grown up knowing this minor league team, uh, you know, since I was a kid and I met him and wasn't expecting to be the person that, that was underneath the mask. Uh, he's much shorter than the uh, the actual costume height. So that totally threw me in a loop. Mm-hmm. Um, but super nice, super down to earth, you know, was asking me questions and like. I was like a little nervous because I thought to myself, I'm like, dear God, this guy thinks I'm actually a professional mascot and I just volunteer and I get paid on some occasions to do the mascot. Um, Mm -hmm. But I, but I remember he got on his, his suit, got on his mascot and we were in like a locker room area. And as soon as he hit that door, it was like a light switch. And like, he just turned on and Mm -hmm. was super energetic, super, you know, getting in people's way and faces before COVID uh, and just like being this totally new person. And I thought to myself, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I have to show this person up on my birthday. I can't have him celebrate it. Um, But one of the things I did learn of being a mascot was taking photos. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever known about this, Matt, um, about taking photos as a mascot, the hands, the hands. Yeah. So for those who don't know, if you ever take a picture of the mascot, and you get your picture taken. <laughs> this sounds so weird, but once I explain it, see where his hand or her, see where his or her hands are, the mascot's hands. You will never, ever see a professional mascot done well um, whose hands are not showing in the camera frame. Mm-hmm. Which is something that I didn't know when I first started. And I was once I heard that, I was like, oh, that, that does make a lot of sense for obvious reasons. Because you don't you don't want it to be weird for right anybody and for anybody you know it, it just it, it cracks me up when I see mascots when I see the people try to be the mascot that I once was and like you see a picture with them and <laughs> hands are totally covered and it's like oh ho, ho. <laughs> you can tell who's professional and who's not uh, the other tough thing that I've had so a lot of times when I've been a mascot my head is in the neck yes like my face is in the neck yep. But the head does not, the eyes don't look straight. Yep. So when you take a photo, I have to like keep my head pointed down so that the mascot's head is looking straight. Not fun on your neck. Oh. Uh, especially not fun when you do it for a double header of a baseball game. Oh. So did I mention this on the podcast at all? I don't think so. Yeah. So a great day for, for many reasons. For baseball. <laughs> uh, for great. many reasons. Um, and I had to do, I don't think you're catching up on putting down on it. It's an inside joke. Um, so I had to be a mascot for double header. Never did a mascot for a game before. It was awesome. Um, so we did a t-shirt toss. So you, you'd think it's a simple t-shirt toss. Maybe. So I'm slinging t-shirts left and right. Tried getting to the upper deck. I don't think I actually hit one because it's hard to throw. I, I have the final t-shirt in my hand. I throw it. I'm trying to aim for this guy. The t-shirt goes a row behind. 
nails a five-year-old girl like square in the face <laughs> square in the face so i'm in suit like laughing because it was, it was, i thought it was funny and people were like ah yeah. ha, ha. i turn around to pick up the bucket turn back around the girl is bawling her eyes out i mean just bawling her eyes out so i'm like all right so then i go over give her a hug take a photo made her a day but was it hysterical that I nailed her right in the face? Absolutely. Hand up. It was it was funny at the time because I thought it was just like, oh, I got hit with a t-shirt. I didn't think it hurt, hurt that much. When I realized it did, you put on the mascot charm, you make it work. Could you imagine if she didn't like mascots? I've had that happen too, where you try to, you know, I went to a birthday party once and the <laughs> child's birthday was not thrilled with, nope. with the mascot. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Makes it tough. My favorite, I, I was walking through a school the one day, like an elementary school, and all of a sudden you hear screams and shouts because you're just like casually like, you know, I, I was having a little strut in my stuff. Like I was just kind of like walking around with my hands and I'm just like <laughs> wiggling around and everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's a cat. People also don't realize um, certain mascots have different personalities. Yes, they do. Like we have, uh, the where I work, we have a set of mascots that are you know, it's just like you slide them on type of thing. But we have a lovable loser. We have one that's kind of like a jerk. Uh, <laughs> some funny ones. Like, mascots aren't always supposed to be, like, the same. Like, right. they have different personalities and different different actions. Yeah, and, and that's always something that I've always said um, with with my mascot that I, that I once was, is we need to train somebody because then that can, mm -hmm. keeps consistent with the brand and the organization Absolutely. that's a part of it. And and no one seems to listen. So, um, whatever. It's not. I'm not the mascot anymore. So it's not my problem. Correct. Um, but yeah. Uh, hopefully, uh, Dylan is is uh, recovering and is and his defense fund is ready to go. Um, they are thirty five dollars on PickleShop.com uh, for those Portland Pickles baseball shirts. Uh, it is. Oh, it's a. It is Dylan's International Scandil Defense Fund Team. Mm. <laughs> and Scandal is Scan, S-C-A-N, Dill, D-I-L-L. -L. They are really pulling They're really this. going all in on the Dill <laughs> jokes. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess good for them. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's all good. So, um, well, Matt, looks like we're going to have to take a trip to Oregon because I feel like we need to visit Pickle Rick. <laughs> I've been wanting to call him Pickle Rick this entire time, but his name is Dylan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would rather not uh, do a trip to Oregon, but you know what I would rather do? What would you would rather? I would love to do a round of Would You Rather. <laughs> so um, we're going to do a few. Mike, I came up with all these by myself, so these, hand up, if these are bad, you can blame me. Uh, Congratulations. Tweet at us, let me know how bad I suck. Um, and I had them pulled up on my iPad, and Google Docs just decided to update, so... <gasps> That's really, really unfortunate. So, Mike, you, I had to stall. So now you're going to stall until okay. this loads. What, what do you want me to? What do you want me to present? Anything. Um. So, uh, welcome everyone to the second half of the show. Um. Even though there's no halves anymore, it's one full show because it's one full thing of fun. Uh, okay. I have it. Ah, oh, darn! I was just getting into my pitch, man. Well, you know what? <laughs> you cracked under pressure. Yeah. Okay. What? Would you rather? Be a famous author or a famous painter? Author. I would agree. Um, I think more so because... Hmm. How do I want to phrase this? If you're a famous painter, you have to be really good at... Uh, I don't really know how... Uh, you explain it. I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> really I had it in my under, head, and then I'm like, pressure. no, I don't. Cracked under the pressure, huh? <laughs> uh, I think being an author is more shareable within the world. Um, so, for instance, Michelangelo, who who created the the Sistine, who created the paintings in the Sistine Chapel, like, yeah, you could see them on Google, but you literally have to go to the Sistine Chapel in order for you to see the work of art. Whereas, like J.K. Rowling for Harry Potter, like anyone could read Harry Potter no matter where they are on the earth. Um, mm -hmm. And the nice thing is you can either get it as a paperback, you get it, get it as a, you know, a woven book and get it as an ebook and get it as mm -hmm. a Kindle. And you're, you know, you're, you're synonymous because you're able to distribute that way. Whereas a painter, you're kind of stuck unless you're an NFT person, then that's a whole different story. 
That's exactly what I was trying to say, so I'm not even going to say another word. We're just going to move on. Under pressure. <laughs> Push it down on me. <laughs> Jerk. Uh, would you rather be forced to only eat fruits or vegetables for the rest of your life? Oh, man. I would say fruits. I love fruits. Um, I do like salads. However, I like fruit salad a little better. Yummy, um, yummy. <laughs> apples. There's so many types of apples. Uh, there's peaches, strawberries, bananas, mangoes, um, grapes. But you know what's underrated? I don't. I'm not a big blueberry fan. To see blueberries by myself, I right. like blueberry pie and stuff like that. But like raspberries, actually pretty good. Kiwi, cantaloupe, uh, honeydew, pineapple. I love pineapple. Ah, oh, dude, this is so tough. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'll go with fruit. I love. Uh, it's an apple a day for me, dog. Apple a apple day. day keeps the doctor away. Yep, blueberries, honeydew. Like you said, that that's really good. This is blueberries just... are probably my least favorite fruit. Well, that we can disagree on. <laughs> What's your least favorite fruit? Uh, least favorite fruit. Um, damn. I'm trying to think. I just, I can't say, I can't eat like blueberries, like popping it. I can't do it. Well, I don't know why. We're not going blueberry picking over the summer. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm down for a good blueberry cobbler or blueberry pie. But you don't like just straight up blueberries. I don't like straight up blueberries. So no. it's kind of like somebody who says, oh, I like French fries, but I don't like potatoes. <laughs> In a way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, would you rather your parent or one of your children be famous? Like, would you rather your mom or dad? So would you rather your mom or dad be famous or one of your kids be famous? Uh, well, my dad is already famous on TikTok. TikTok famous. That is correct. (laughs) Um, I don't know, man. I feel like my kids, because there's... A trickle down pressure if your parents become famous then like they have to assume that you'll become famous and the whole world is is watching you um you know let's take a look at the royal family here queen elizabeth Mm -hmm. you know all of her offspring is supposed to be successful and and you know great and uh you know it's tough but then like kids you can just you can just admire how how successful they are and you know isn't that the point of being a parent make your kids more successful than you yeah i i think seeing your kids be that successful would be i also agree it would it would i'd rather my child be famous because like you said like a basketball player like if you're a really really good basketball player as and your son starts playing basketball and high school basketball they're gonna have a lot of pressure on them and, you know, you don't want to give them more pressure, like, you know, naming your kid, I don't know, LeBron James Jr. Like, you wouldn't do that. Bronny. <laughs> right. You wouldn't do that to your kid. Like, who would do that? Like, you know. Not naming names. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> at all. Um, would you rather always be sweating or freezing? <laughs> Dude, I was watching cops. <laughs> right. Um, oh, I... Sweating. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because it's the heat of winter. I, I would rather be sweating sitting in air conditioning than be freezing sitting in the heat because air conditioning helps a little bit. You can still sweat in air conditioning, but definitely it, I, I feel better when I have air conditioning on me in the summer than I do when I have heat on in the winter. And when it was like eight degrees that one day, I remember going outside and like shoveling and like doing no. Yeah, it was eight degrees and I. It, last week was talking about two inches of ice on my car. Mm -hmm. Um, And just that fact that you come back in and your hands are just frozen and you're trying to, you know, I literally stood in front of my heater and I just put my hands as close to the grade as possible for my hands to actually thaw out. Um, Sweating, sweating on the other hand could depend on a couple scenarios. Like, if you're talking in public, always wear a suit jacket. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Oh, you don't want to see what's underneath with a, with a, with a colored shirt. <laughs> Not today. Uh, two more. Would you rather eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with 90% peanut butter or 90% jelly? Uh, so let's, let's say you're, you're making a sandwich and you only have a limited amount of one. 
but you really got to make that sandwich. So you're taking more peanut butter or more jelly? More jelly. Man, we're just agreeing on everything today. Yeah. I, I agree because I feel like you would taste... So I would rather eat more of jelly because I, too much peanut butter is going to overpower the whole sandwich. Right, because you're still getting peanut butter, right? Yeah. And I feel yeah, like you get that's 10% a, peanut butter. Like that's a savory type of deal. And it's like, mm-hmm. I feel like it would balance out the jelly a little bit more and more if mm-hmm. somebody decided to put a bunch of peanut butter and less jelly. Yeah, I agree. If it's 90% peanut butter, it's going to over, overpower the whole thing. I don't think I would taste as much jelly. Science. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> don't look it up. Aliens. One more. This one might be hard to explain, but I have it in my head. So, would you rather be average at everything you do or always under or overperform at everything you do? So, I, I, get, I get the idea, right. but, but your second one, you always are over and so under are overperforming or underperforming. So, you're either average at everything you do, you do it fine. Or you always do it either really good or really bad. Like you, but you don't yeah, know yeah. if you're going to do it good or bad. Oh, you don't know. Right. So you know you're at least going to get it averagely done or it could be good or bad. I feel like for accountability purposes, I, I will want to be average on everything that I do. So this inspiration came from uh, part of my take. They always talk about this with backup quarterbacks. They say backup quarterbacks, like let's say the, the star quarterback gets injured and he's going to be out like two to, three, two to three games. Right. If you're the backup, their theory is that you don't want to come in and play really, really well for the all three games. Because the next time you come in, you're going to be expected to play really, really well and you're a backup. On the flip side, if you play average as a backup quarterback and you come in, you win some games, you lose some games... You will have a job for the rest of your life <laughs> because you're a backup quarterback. You're supposed to be average and you're just going to skate by just playing here and there, playing well, playing bad, getting by because, you know, in the back of your head, you can't be a starting quarterback for 10 years, but you can be a good backup quarterback for like 12. Like, could you imagine being like a brain surgeon and like having that scenario like you're either just like average a brain surgeon or you have no idea if you're going to be good or bad no matter how many times you perform <laughs> yeah that would so, be that'd be a tough conversation like hey listen um 50 of the time this works 50 percent of the time it doesn't and <laughs> i'd be like uh, can i see a, a dr b like i would rather have i'd rather have three star ratings but but have like three star ratings like from every single person and have that consistency um because yeah. then you like Sorry, I'm thinking I'm thinking way too deep into this one. <laughs> like go for it. Financially. Like let's say okay, I'll take photography for instance. Like photography, let's say you're consistently good. I mean, sorry, you're just consistent. Like you're consistently average. You mm. know every time you're going to take a photo, it's just going to be average. Like it's not going to be the best photo that you're going to take, it's not the worst photo you're going to take. It is right in the middle. Whereas you know, you charge it a certain amount whereas you know, the best or the worst and you're charging the same flat rate, like mm-hmm. you get you get a little little hesitant because you don't know where you're gonna get. Right. And to go back to your like three star review, like if you go on Yelp and you see everyone's rating three stars, you're like, okay, it's worth a shot. But if you see half five stars, half one stars, I'm gonna think, well, I'm gonna be that one star review, yep. so I'm not gonna purchase or I'm not gonna go there. So I again there's nothing wrong with being average. No. It gets by. Listen, yeah. C's get degrees. Listen, I'm jack of all trades, master of none. Like you can, you can do a lot of good things being average. A- absolutely, average. They're called Joes. average Joes for a reason. <laughs> uh, let's 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 end the show with everyone's favorite down in the dumps. I have. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. I'll okay. go first. Okay. Um. So I have a few. Um, Boy, really my first bad week. one. Well, it's been an interesting weekend. It's okay. been an interesting couple of days. Okay. Um, so on Saturday, was it Saturday? Was it Sunday? I don't remember what day. 
Sunday. Um, I think it was Saturday. Uh, April and I went to Taco Bell for lunch. Love oh, Taco Bell. No. <laughs> Love Taco Bell. I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. Um, got two uh, cheesy gordita crunches, okay. and of course the Baja Blast. Mm. Ate them. Fine. No problem. Feeling good. We go to Kohl's. <laughs> On the way to Kohl's, I'm like, all right, well, I don't really know what's going to happen. Um, so we walk into Kohl's to exchange an Amazon order. Thankfully, there was a long line uh, because we got in line and I went to April. I was like, hey, is there a bathroom in here? Yeah. And she just looks at me. Just, she just starts laughing yeah. herself. And I'm like, you're not helping this scenario whatsoever. <laughs> um, so then went to the bathroom. Went, you know, walked into the bathroom area. There's like nine females in there, which is fine. Not in the men's bathroom, in oh, like the waiting area outside. I was like, uh, I can explain. <laughs> and then I came out. They all gave me dirty looks. I'm just saying. I, I don't know. <laughs> they all gave me some looks. I wasn't wasn't thrilled with it. Um, yeah, but that was not fun because for a split second walking in, I'm like, oh my gosh, Coles doesn't have a bathroom, <laughs> and I got really nervous. <laughs> That that was an adventure, Matt. <laughs> it, yes, it really was. Um, my other one, uh, other than the fact that I just made my face bleed in the middle of this podcast, I don't know if you saw that at some oh, point. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, there's like a pimple or something that I popped. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It happens to me all um, the time. So, well, I'll add another down to the dumps. Ben Roethlisberger's done with the Steelers. That sucks. You know, I thought um, you were going to say something like that. I, I bought a great t-shirt from Burstall this weekend. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like a cartoon version of Ben Roethlisberger. He's all like taped up and he's carrying a walking boot. And on the back of the shirt has every injury he's ever had and every year in his career he's had the injury. <laughs> I'm so excited. That's it's amazing. it's great. Uh, but the other, the real down in the dumps, um, we all know I am not an Eagles fan. Um, I was hoping for the Eagles to beat the Buccaneers just because of Tom Brady. Um, I can't stop saying go birds. Like the 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 what people say, go birds, right? Like for the Eagles, I said it like twice because I I watched the game with some family and April is an Eagles fan. Sadly, oh, how did? Uh, yeah, how? I know, I don't know. We're working I mean, I on guess it. Jenna. Yeah, Jenna. Wait, <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> but it's funny. So I've been to an Eagles game. April hasn't. April has been to a Steelers game. I haven't. Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, but I was saying go birds to be fun, and now I'm kind of addicted to saying go birds because it's kind of cool. Uh. Man, I don't like it. No, man. I know. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I'm not. I'm not thrilled with myself. I'm not gonna lie. Did they lose? They did. They got oh, crushed. Thank God. Yeah, I absolutely murdered. Yeah, a big a big weekend for uh, Pennsylvania people who hate for Pennsylvania and for people who hate like popular sports teams because the Patriots lost, the Eagles lost, the Cowboys lost in a <laughs> hilarious fashion, <laughs> boneheads, and the Steelers lost. Yeah. Nobody cares about the Raiders. And the Raiders lost. It's a fan base that, that people hate. Um, so, hey, yeah. At least at least the SoFi Stadium is going to be the Super Bowl. And that, have you heard anything about the SoFi Stadium? It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It Did is we going... talk about the halftime show? Uh, yeah, it's like a conglomerate oh. of like Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, Stupid Dog. Said. Uh, no, Eminem, oh. Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick yep. Lamar. Yep. Me lit. That's a that's a nice. I I like that group instead mm-hmm. of it being one person and being like ah eh, like. Now the weekend last year that that was pretty fabulous. Like, the weekend was, awesome. was that was awesome for yeah. for the limitations that they had and the things that they had to do. It was great. Yeah, um, fantastic. Yeah. So hopefully, and I think now that the Eagles are you know not playing, I won't be saying go birds as often. Uh, but I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of fun for that like. 72 hour window it's just like go birds and everyone's like go birds i was go like birds. here we go go birds uh, that's all i got my turn yeah i only have two okay um my first one uh we recently had an announcement at my workplace that uh there is a work from home policy now oh. um so so i won't be having any more days off now when it snows oh yes oh so there's a stipulation that's... Working at a college that if classes are canceled and like the university's closed, you, for for those who aren't workaholics like I am, <laughs> you don't have to work that day. Um, 
we don't have that option anymore because mm. people can just say you can work remote. And so you're still in the office. Uh, I worked from home today. Oh, okay. Believe it or not. So it's so, kind of like a touch and go kind of thing. Uh, you need to be in the office three days out of the week. Okay. I think. Not terrible. I see. I, for me, it's like, okay, I'm only going to take off one day. I'm only not take off, but I'm going to work from home one day a week instead of, right. you know. I mean, I'm it, it comes in helpful when it's like snow or like ice and you don't feel like risking an accident or something like that. That's well, yeah, helpful. Even today, like, yeah, it snowed today and we're obviously mm-hmm. we're discussing about it. And, you know, it, when I looked at the road, the road was cleared. However, there was this really weird winter mix that was coming in and I looked at the weather. And it said it wasn't going to stop till five o'clock tonight. Ooh. And like, I could just think to myself, like, if it gets colder, if it gets freezing temperatures, mm. it is going to be slippy and it's not going to be cool. But, you know, sometimes you need to work from home. Um, I got a lot of planning done, um, which was very odd. Um, I'm in for the time of my life the next couple of months, but we're here for it. That's future uh, use problem. Yeah, that's future me's problem. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I my my childhood days are over of never yeah. having a snow day anymore. That does suck. It does. It's a tough realization to come to. Yeah, but I feel like I've lived it long enough to be like, all right, now it's fine now. Like now I feel obligated to work. Um and just adulting. That's mm-hmm. how it is. Uh so Matt, my last one. Um I'm surprised we are three weeks into twenty twenty two. Mm-hmm. couple of weeks um we haven't mentioned anything about betty white yeah and at the recording of this podcast today betty white would have been 100 years old damn and we also had another icon bob saget pass away mm-hmm. uh, only a couple of weeks ago but yep what was weird was a people's magazine i think was already doing this big celebration about Betty White's 100th yeah. birthday. And this was like weeks before the birthday. And I'm like, yeah, Dude. unnecessary. <laughs> Very unnecessary. They, they jinxed her. They really did. They um, did. I found out that Bob Saget's death was, I believe, a heart attack. Okay. Um, and then I didn't know that. Betty White's. I don't remember. I honestly don't, I don't even know if I heard what Betty White's cause of death was. Uh, it wasn't also, COVID. Everybody was suspecting um, it was COVID. I'm out um, on People's Magazine because they then posted another cover of her, like, remembering Betty White. It's like, you guys, do you guys not remember what you just posted, like, yeah. three weeks ago? Uh, it said that it was, Betty White died of a cerebrovascular accident or stroke. She sh- oh, suffered the stroke six days before she died. Damn. Um, yeah, that was so, a tough one. But, yeah. but the silver lining... I don't know if you saw this, but someone said Betty White passed away in 2021 for a reason. Because if she would have passed on January 1st of 2022, we all would have have hated 2022 (laughs) immediately. So, maybe not saying she took one for the team, but maybe she did. Maybe she was like, you know what? The world doesn't need another hated year. Maybe. Might as well just combine it. Food for thought. Yeah, um, you know, uh, Betty White, you oh, we've talked about Betty White on this podcast quite a bit. Um, we thought that she belonged in the Groundhog uh, Punks Tiny Phil uh cult, mm-hmm. uh, which was the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> um, yep. so you know, it was just it was weird because reflecting back, like we were talking about Betty White's 99th birthday, um, last year, and, and now we're here again one year later talking about Betty White's death. Uh, so you know. I think what was cool was the media did pivot quite quickly, um, especially Mm -hmm. Rion Seacrest's uh, New Year's Rock and Eve. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, they had a little short little bit, but then I think I just saw everybody on Instagram stories just doing shots for Betty White. And when was the last time somebody passed away and you're like, let's do shots for this person? Yeah. uh, I couldn't think the last time, but yeah, I mean, there will never be another Betty White. There just won't. One of a kind. A uh, true American hero. She did serve in the military. She did. You know, yep. United States Army. So she really did it all. She did. And I think she's a WWE Hall of Famer, if I'm correct. 
I hope so. <laughs> wait, I, I ready, wouldn't want to walk into a ring, see Betty White on the other side. Hall of Fame. Hang on. She, uh, Raw in 2000, Hall of Fame. Uh, oh, I wonder if. So this is Jenny. Okay, mm-hmm. so Betty White is not. She's well, been she on. Be. She's been on. Uh, what do you call it? She has been on WWE quite a bit. And, and they've, uh, you know. She hosted Raw in 2014, and just yeah, she she's an icon. So hopefully she yeah, she, uh, she gets WWE Hall of Fame induction the way that she deserves it. So absolutely. Um. So rest in peace, Betty White, Bob Saget, mm-hmm. and of course all those who we lost in this past couple of weeks and evolved 2021. Um. And yeah, so that's that's my downs and the 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 dumps. Yeah. Um. So. We hit it all. Yeah. Every direction. We were talking mm-hmm. about pickles to start. We were hopping over to talk about vegetables and fruits. And now we're yep. talking about Betty White. <laughs> yeah. No, no way you're going to get on this podcast. No way, sir. Um, but yeah, that concludes another great episode of the Funny Business Podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, make sure you follow us on our social media. Buy our merchandise. You can find all that information at solo to slash funny business mr matthew Mm -hmm. what is your advice for the good people this week um so i mentioned before i'm getting a colonoscopy next week let's get it um nothing nothing major i'm just just a checkup (laughs) but this is just a reminder to go to the doctor get checked uh even if there's nothing wrong go for a yearly checkup uh once you turn 50 maybe it's time you get a colonoscopy yourself Um, uh 50 once you turn 50 oh yeah, I, I, I have special reasons. This is like my fourth or fifth colonoscopy. I, oh. Listen, oh, for those anyone out there not ever, you know, curious, like, oh my gosh, seven colonoscopy. It's a great nap. <laughs> it's, a, it's a phenomenal nap. The day before it sucks. I can't eat anything the day before and have to drink a lot of liquids. Ooh. Yeah. And what's really worse is my thing, my appointment is not till one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, so you're going like basically two full days without lunch. Pretty much. Ah. Yeah. Without anything. I can't eat breakfast on the day before. Uh, and once it, once I wake up the the day of, I can't have like anything, like water, nothing. You just gotta yeah. be dry, man. Right, but it's a great nap. And then I wake up. That's gonna be like the best meal of my life. Do they anesthet? Do they? Yeah. They, they, yes. 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 Yeah, they have to. Well, yeah. Th- think <laughs> about that. I figured, man. Okay. I just I'm was just, curious. I'm like, just saying. <laughs> I've never had a colonoscopy. So <laughs> right, but it's, it's whether it's colonoscopy or. Go to the ear doctor. Go get your vision checked. Just go to the doctor. It's not that scary. Now, Matt, I do have to ask, because social media was buzzing this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Matt, on a Chef Gordon Ramsay scale of 1 to 10, how was the dinner you made for April? Uh, It was a 10. Yeah, really? no, it was good. Gordon so Ramsay not, rating? <laughs> I did not make it for her. We made it together. Oh! Right. That's it, where it was. Yeah, no. <laughs> we did make it together. I said learning how to cook. I didn't say I did cook. Yeah, but I thought like the picture by yourself. Like I was like, oh, Matt's like doing it himself. Like we both we both equally contributed. Um, yeah, we just wanted to cook, and then, you know, I've always said I wanted to try to learn how to cook. She's so like, well, why don't we cook? And now we're kind That's of cool. addicted to cooking. We're planning out more recipes to cook and everything like that. But it was fun. I liked it a lot. I and also it- just tasted phenomenal. I I, th- I was jo- jokingly thinking that you were gonna say you know learn something new because you learned how to cook this weekend. I always try to predict what your advice is based on what I know about from the week. <laughs> Not too many people know what's going up in this oh, brain. Yeah. Um. But then I was gonna jokingly say I was like, so Matt, what are you making tonight? <laughs> we're having fish tacos tonight. You're making it? No. <laughs> we're having it. I thought you can't eat dinner. I, the day before. Isn't oh sorry the following week my bad yeah right right mm-hmm. my bad my it's okay it's at that point of the podcast our minds is just fried yep we talk so much um yeah nothing nothing fun I mean besides more podcasting and more live streaming so mm-hmm. uh, be on the lookout for that um like I said buy our merch merch is yep. fabulous Matt's wearing a sweatshirt right now so comfy um, yeah. Uh, long sleeves are very comfortable too and the mm-hmm. mugs they hold the best amount of liquid um, i would hold mine but i have my that's my new office mug ah 
mm-hmm. yep. spreading that spreading that game, you know? Absolutely. Spreading it around, being we're we're a professional business. Uh-huh. And we're off we're always open for free trials. If you give us a freaking free trial. Okay. Well, someone's a little <laughs> agitated. <laughs> I had somebody, sorry, this is the last thing before we go today, guys. I literally had somebody who reached out to our Instagram. Now, tendencies be that because of my job, I tend to be the first person to quickly get to the, the, the message first. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, just, that's just how it rolls. Um, so we had somebody who reached out to us and said, hello. So we responded back, hello. And they go, how are you? Like, doing well. How are you? And she goes, good. What can I help you with? <laughs> I'm like, you said hello first. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I didn't really read all these messages until the end. It was a great conversation. Yeah. So we get, so I check her profile. Automatically, I know she's trying to sell us a service. And prices, okay, she's from Bangladesh, which has no discrimination whatsoever in, in service or anything like that, or just, just pure judgment. Um, I think, Matt, quite honestly, she was using a translator. Um, yeah. yeah. Based on- I don't think she was a real person. The fragmentation of the sentences. Um, so I was checking. It was like, oh, 10 bucks. Like, you optimize one video. And, you know, she was reaching out to us. Like, there's got to be some type of, like, give or take here. Like, if you're reaching out to us, what can you offer us before we offer something back to you? Um, and she just wasn't getting it. And, you know, we were saying, like, oh, is there a free trial that you can offer that, that you can, you know, she wanted to help the podcast in, in plain terms. And I'm like, is there anything you can offer a free trial? Just so as we can make a decision. She goes, no. And then she's like, show me your YouTube channel and like sends the YouTube channel and then insults us that we have this low and this low. And I'm like, thanks. We know like it's not that we don't know. Uh, But then she kept going. She's like, I I don't understand. She's like, you're never going to be successful if you just base your things on free trials. And I'm like, you're not understanding the business of this point. Like you're not understanding the progression. I'm like, we have to see if your product's good. And then we can go ahead and proceed with your thing. And she's like, well, you can just trust my buyer review. And I was like, that's based on the experience of the buyer review. Like, not us. Like, we have needs. You have needs. And she said, oh, it's going to lose a lot of money. Ten bucks for the most basic package that she was offering with Fiverr. Um, Stupid. Sorry. I still think she was a bot. I don't think she's a real person. I, I think she is, too, based on some of the other reviews I've been seeing that was saying yeah. oh look at the fake reviews and yeah yeah definitely would have gotten our credit cards hacked 100 <laughs> percent. well thankfully it's it's fiverr so fiverr is a nice little medium medium for for okay. that type of business good, um, good but she's like oh yeah i can give you 20 subscribers i can give you 10 subscribers and 20 views right now and i'm like how i'm like that sounds illegal like you can't just get subscribers because that goes against YouTube's policies, like faux show. Mm-hmm. And she's like, it's not illegal. <laughs> like, <laughs> and neither is robbing a bank. Yeah, right. <laughs> Apparently. I don't so, know. So, in closing, we thank all of you who have supported us from day one for a new day as of today, if you're just listening for the first time. Um, and hey, just, just keep on keeping on. Make sure you offer something before you try to ask for something. And until the next time, we'll see you all in the next video. Stay safe, everyone.